The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everyone, Kim Snyder here. We've got about three minutes left, so um, I am going to hang out until then. But in the meantime, if you all wouldn't mind letting me know that you can see my screen and uh, hear me, and someone, if you would just type that in the questions, that would be awesome. Great. Thank you, Connie. You're always on the spot with that. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, guys. All right. I'll be back in just uh, two, two minutes. Okay, hello everybody, and welcome, welcome to today's masterclass, what every Facebook marketer should know about retargeting. Hang on, I'm just going to move my microphone stand just ever so slightly. There we go. Um, so, thank you so much for being here. I know that uh, many of you know me pretty well, but I also know that quite there are quite a lot of new people on this call who don't know me from Adam. Um, so let me give you a mercifully brief introduction before we get into the prepared content. My name is Kim Snyder. I am the founder of 13 companies, including my most recent, which is Sync to CRM. Company number nine was number 826 on the 2008 Inc. list of fastest growing privately held companies in America. In fact, we were on the Inc. list two years running, 2008 and 2009. I am an Infusionsoft certified partner, Infusionsoft certified developer, and very proud to have been named Infusionsoft's 2014 most helpful partner. And finally, my passion outside of growing businesses is playing polo. I live on a polo farm in Aiken, South Carolina with my husband, <laughs> three dogs and uh, bunches of horses. So uh, that is a, a very quick synopsis of um, uh, my background and how I got to be here. So many, many of you took advantage of the free Facebook ad assessment that I offered prior to this training. And it was so interesting because there, and I mentioned this in one of the, the videos you may have seen, there were really primarily two challenges that were cited at the end, but by far and away, the most common one, when, when the numbers, as the numbers got bigger, you know, the, the gap got bigger as well. It was improving return on investment on your 
ad campaigns. And it's not surprising to me because I get asked this question all the time in one form or another. So what's the answer? Well, the answer is retargeting or at least using methods like retargeting, retargeting to personalize your messaging in order to get a higher conversion rate, lower cost, and better result. And so that is the reason that I am doing this masterclass today. There was a benchmark study that was released very recently, and it really punctuated this point. It's found that using retargeting to personalize your ads, and this is their quote from the executive summary, uh, has the proven power to deliver campaigns that are three times as effective or on the other end, decrease their ad spend by one third. So let's talk about what we are going to cover today. I'm going to try to get through a lot of material in an hour and then leave a lot of time for Q&A. So the first thing is, what is retargeting? Um, because maybe you've heard the term and you're not completely familiar with it. Maybe you do know, but I want to make sure everybody is all on the same page. So we'll just hit that first. Then we're going to talk about some basic concepts that you need to understand in order to really grasp retargeting. So that's their foundational. And um, so we'll go through those first. Then I'm going to do a little demonstration. I am going to do an example campaign. I'm going to draw it out for you and we'll create the audiences and, um, and show you how that would work in the ad manager. Then we'll talk about the five ways top marketers are using retargeting and how you can too. And then I will use whatever time is left for an ask me anything session. And that at that point really does mean ask me anything. I will open it up to anything that I covered on retargeting or frankly, anything about Facebook advertising or small, small business marketing. Uh, I'm totally open once we get to that uh, section and then I've got literally maybe two minutes of closing remarks after that. So that is going to be our agenda for the next 90 minutes. Okay. All right. So as promised, let's talk about what is Facebook retargeting. So, so this is the definition. It is, it's my definition, by the way, it's showing a specific ad to someone based on what you know about them, actions that they have taken and, or where they are in your funnel. Now, the benefits of retargeting are massive, okay? They are higher conversion rates, greater reach, meaning your ad gets shown to more people, and lower cost, all of which combine to lead to that 3x number I mentioned a few slides back from the benchmark report. That is why that happens. And what you have to understand is that to be a successful Facebook advertiser, as you are about to see, it is all about relevance and user experience for the person seeing the ad. So let's go through some of these basic concepts that are background for the demo that we're going to do when we create our retargeting campaign. All right. The, f the first one is avatar. Those of you who I, I see, I'm looking at the attendee list and I see a bunch of you have been in a bunch of my programs. You know, I beat on these next two all the time. Sorry that you, you, but, but it's important. An avatar, if you don't know that word is a fictional character representing your ideal customer. So a lot of times someone will say, oh, my avatar is a small business owner. That is not an avatar. An avatar is my avatar is Brad. Brad is 34 years old. His wife, Mary teaches school. They have three kids. They live in, you know, blah, 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 blah. He, um, kayaks in his spare time, you know, his issues are, I mean, it is literally a fictional character. And, and if you look at our nine step process that I work with my, um, coaching clients on this and, you know, defining your avatar and your customer journey are the first things that we do. And, you know, most of us 
it's a iterative process to get closer and closer to what is a real avatar, myself included, because it takes, it does take work and it takes research. But let me tell you why this is important. It's remember where we're going with this entire conversation. It's all about specificity and, and relevance. And the more you can get in your avatar's head, your ideal customer customer's head and speak to them directly, the greater that uh, benefit is going to be. The higher the conversion rate, uh, the lower the cost, the higher the relevance score. All things we're going to talk about in a minute. So it all starts with avatar. Then the next concept, I, I and you're going to see this because I'm going to do it for you, um, is a customer journey. And this is the steps that your avatar is going to take to go from having absolutely no idea who you are, literally never heard of you ever, to a customer. That's the customer journey. The next concept is segmentation. And segmentation is simply using data to group your suspects, prospects, and customers in a way that you can personalize, which is our next term, personalization, which is delivering marketing messages that are specific to a segment. Okay. So basically what I was just, this all goes together when I was referring to the avatar. Make sense to everybody? Okay. Those go together. Now here's the next one. This one is, um, really, um, become, it's become, I guess, common lingo traffic temperature. It, it was originally created by Molly Pittman at Digital Marketer, but now literally it's just become the language. It's part of the language of Facebook advertising or, or paid traffic. Actually, everybody uses it. Um, but what it is, is it's just a, a simple way of characterizing a contact's relationship with you. And it basically looks like this cold, warm, hot, someone who is cold, it's cold traffic is what we call it or warm traffic, hot traffic, cold traffic, never heard of you before. Warm traffic is like an acquaintance. And what this means is, for example, they've been to your website. They've maybe looked at a blog post. They've watched a video, something like that. But, you know, on the left-hand side of warm, you don't even have their email address yet. On the right-hand side of, of warm, maybe you do, but they haven't bought from you yet. Okay. So for example, you all, most of you on this call are warm. There are a number of you though, who are also hot. And that is because you have been consuming my content for a long time. You've been in a bunch of my programs. Carrie says, I'm hot. <laughs> Karen's hot. Um, I'm not commenting on those girls. Um, however, However, right, the idea is, you know, you all have have uh, basically uh, bought um, and or, you know, know me, know me really, really well. OK, now the thing, let me just go to the next one. OK, so here is a here is that um, superimposed over this cold, warm, hot idea. But but going back for a second, this slide is really important because in terms of being successful as an advertiser, um, this understanding of traffic temperature as a relationship and similar to any new relationship where you gradually move from, we literally just, you know, met in whatever, in line at the grocery store to becoming a, an acquaintance, to becoming a friend and being sensitive to where someone is along that continuum is going to determine your success overall with Facebook advertising. And specifically it relates to, to retargeting, but this just happens over and over and over again. I was on a call actually with a gentleman from who took up, took me up on my free consult offer from this webinar this morning, uh, 6 AM. And he had hired someone to, um, he wanted to sell an ebook, $497 ebook. And he had hired someone to run Facebook ads and they were, and he said he'd been running them. He'd had X number of people come to the ad. Nobody bought his ebook. And I asked him what, what they were doing. 
Well, they were running that $497 ebook ad to cold traffic. Nothing else, no relationship whatsoever, cold traffic. And I told him that ad is never, ever, 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 ever going to work. He says, well, the guy keeps telling me to just wait. You know, it will. I said, how long have you been running it? He said, two weeks. <laughs> he said, trust me, it's never going to work. Go in your Facebook ad manager. Yeah, no kidding, Carrie. Go in your Facebook ad manager and kill this. Okay. But the the thing is, right, you, and some people are saying jerk, right? The guy's just trying to rip him off. But actually I see this unintentionally people, you know, when people are managing their own ads all the time. Okay. And that is that they are trying to ask people to marry them when they've just met them or maybe never met them. It's just not going to work. So this continuum in terms of a relationship is most important on Facebook because there's no buyer intent on Facebook. Nobody went to Facebook this morning and said, oh, I'm going to go log on to Facebook and buy a $497 ebook. Never, ever did anyone say that. So what they did say is, oh, I'm going to check Facebook to see what's going on in the world, see what my family are doing, see if I can see some cute pictures of puppies. That's what they come on Facebook for. And so in the same way that when you're at a, at a, a cocktail party and there's a group of people that you don't know who are standing around in a circle talking and you walk up and sort of you know, have to gradually insert yourself into that conversation in a, in a not weird way. That's what you're doing on Facebook, as opposed to walking up to that circle and going, Hey, I'm Kim. Want to buy my ebook? Okay. And so that's one reason why this traffic, traffic temperature thing is so important. However, there's another reason. So let me, um, let me skip back here to this idea. Okay. Right here, the, the overlap of these circles is what we call conversion events. So there needs to be something which is going to move someone from never heard of you to, to, to consume your content to bought. And it's in those intersections. And among other things, conversion events, you, that is where your Facebook ads are going. And that is the objective of your Facebook ads. Now, when we're talking about cold running ads to cold audiences, meaning we're just going to use demographics and interests and whatever to put together an audience of a million and a half people or so have never heard of us just to try to get them into our funnel. That's not what we're talking about today. When we're talking about retargeting specifically, we are really talking about the ads that we begin running once someone is warm, once we know who they are and they know who we are. We, we may have only met once, but it, you know, we're not complete and total strangers. That is what we are talking about today. Okay. So when you hear me talk about cold traffic, warm traffic, this, that's what, that's what we're talking about. All right. The next Core concept is relevance score. And for those of you who are not familiar with relevance score, it's a number between one and 10 that Facebook assigns to every ad and every ad set after it has had a reach of more than 500. And what it does is it combines together a bunch of different engagement metrics that would be things like, um, clicks and likes and comments and shares and, and views of your videos or the amount of time that someone viewed your video, how long they stayed on a video, how long they stayed on your landing page, whether they gave you negative reviews, all of those engagement things. Facebook now lumps those together into one single number called relevance score. And the, and the beauty of the relevance score is that it is as good a predictive indicator of an ad's long-term success as we currently have. And, and when I say ultimate success, what I mean by that is that the person interacting with that ad is likely to be your buyer if you successfully and skillfully move them down your funnel. Okay. So looking at relevant score, okay. Um, I can kind of just sum it up on this one graph. The objective of the great Facebook game is a relevant score of eight or better. That is what you're trying to do with every one of your ads is to get an eight or better. And, you know, all games are hard when you first start. Um, but 
when you practice and you get persistent, you gradually get better and better at it. Okay. So the big question here is what are the levers that you can use to get your relevance score above eight? And that's where today's topic comes in. Okay. Your relevant score is really going to be determined by um, how well you do two things. The first one is your ad creative and offer. That's the one down on the right hand uh, side, the horizontal axis. And by offer, what I mean by that is putting the ideal thing in front of that Facebook user at the right time, given their relationship with you. Okay. That's that whole relationship thing again. Um, but in, but in order to get a positive response from the ad. Okay. Um, and then the creative is the images and the video that used to do it. That is not at all our topic for today. Okay. That's for another day. Um, now audience targeting, which is the vertical axis. This is who you tell Facebook to put your ad in front of and when, and as you're about to see, this is some really powerful stuff. Okay. So the general rule is that the more generic your creative and your ad targeting, the lower your relevance score will be and the better or more specific they are, the higher it will be. And this idea of specificity is a really key concept. Okay. Um, and the reason that retargeting is so powerful is because when we talk about audience targeting, what we're going to be talking about today is actually even a more specific subset of audience targeting where you start to talk to people as if you know them. And that is pretty powerful stuff. Okay. So we're almost there. Um, we're almost to the retargeting. I've got just one or two more core concepts for you. And then, uh, and then we'll get on to the, to the meat. Um, the, the second to last one I think is the Facebook pixel, which this just, it's really interesting. You know, this just continues to be befuddle people, but it is very simply a little piece of code that you put on all of your web properties so that Facebook can track its users on your site. Okay. So, and it's exactly like the Google analytics pixel. And the funny thing is people put the Google analytics pixel on their site all the time without really understanding what it's doing or knowing anything about it. And it causes them no heart burn whatsoever. But the Facebook pixel, <laughs> um, I guess, because people talk about it, like everyone gets all bunched up about it, but it's the same thing goes in the same place. And it literally does the same thing. Both of them tell whether it's Facebook or Google, every time someone goes to your site where this pixel is on the page, it basically reports back to Facebook or Google that someone's been there, what page they're on, what they did, what they clicked on, you know, what IP address they came from, how long they stayed there. Basically every action that happens on any pixeled page gets reported back to the owner of that pixel. And so, the only real difference between Google and Facebook is that with Google, Google has no idea who those people are visiting your website, but Facebook does of course. Right. And so Facebook ties that data back to their user. So it knows that, uh, you know, um, John Doe was on your site he saw three pages. He, you know, was there for 20 minutes and blah, 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 everything that John does, that pixel tells Facebook. That is what it is. Okay. Now what there's now a verb that comes from that, which is pixeling someone and you get a noun, which is a pixeled user. And this is simply a Facebook user who's been to your site at least once and can now be retargeted based on their actions because Facebook, not you, you don't know who they are. Facebook won't tell you that, but Facebook knows who they, who they are. And so when you create, when you get these lists of pixeled users, you can group them based on their activities and, and things that Facebook has recorded and then use them to use those to show them ads before you even know who their, what their email address is. And this is really 
powerful stuff because you know you've always heard that the you know the the power is in the list right that dates back to direct marketing days back in you know eons ago first it was the you know the e the mail list you know snail mail list then it was the email list but now there's something called the second list so for us now having a list of pixeled users who we don't even know who they are. They don't, we don't even have their email address yet. That is now also an asset that we are trying to build at, at, you know, as a stage in our funnel, as you're about to see. Okay. So this idea of a pixeled user is just someone who's been to your site that Facebook can now identify and you can now target with an ad, retarget with an ad because retargeting can't start as I showed you on that temperature a graphic retargeting can't start until Facebook knows who they are, you know, has, has, has tied them to you in some way. Okay. By, by them visiting your site. And then the last one really important concept is custom audience. I lied. I know I said there were only two more, but there were three, um, custom audience. And this is, is very simply just Facebook's word for a defined group of its users, also known as a list, okay? MailChimp calls it a list. Infusionsoft calls it a save search or tags or whatever, but it's just a group, defined group, okay, that you're going to define actually of Facebook users. So we're going to come back to how we create these lists in Facebook in, in just a minute. Um, but first, let's do this first. Let's start to flesh out our example campaign. And then once we've done that, it'll be more obvious which of these custom audiences we need to create. And then we'll go do that. So what we're going to use for our example demo here is we're going to do a simple launch campaign that uses a webinar as the conversion event. So this is not, you know, a really massive campaign like Ryan Levesque just ran for ask. Okay. This is fairly simple. This is, if any of you know who a Amy Porterfield is, this is basically, this is her, her launch formula, if you will. It's very simple. All right. And in fact, let's just, uh, we'll just assume for purposes of this demo that I'm going to do this as a launch for my sync to CRM software. Okay. Just so we have something to kind of talk about. And that way, when we look at some of my custom audiences in my Facebook ad manager, they'll, they'll kind of make sense with the, uh, with the example. All right. So what we want to do first is we want to sit down and think through in our head. Okay. What is the customer journey? What is someone going to do to get from never heard of us before to buying in this case, sync to CRM in our launch? Well, the first thing that we want them to do is to go um, visit someplace to look at ungated content and the definition, definition of ungated, meaning they don't have to give us anything to view it. Um, and in probably in this case, it's something very specific to whatever we um, have launched or are going to be launching. So we might be creating blog posts and podcasts and and all, and uh, different videos, right? Content that that by choosing to visit it is in effect having someone raise their hand and say, "I am interested in this topic that whatever for whatever it is that you're about to launch or whatever this campaign is related to." Okay, so I'd probably, if it was a launch, I'd probably be putting out very specific content for it. But on a more you know day to day level, this could almost be any content on your blog, po podcast, etc. But the reason we want to send them there is because all we have we have the Facebook pixel on all. All of these things. And the moment they go to these pages, they are now known to Facebook and we can now retarget them. So that's step number one. And, and by the way, that's the step that 90% of the time when someone comes to me, maybe 95% of the time and says their campaign isn't working, it's because they didn't, they didn't do this step. They didn't warm them up with this step. Okay. So step number two, then is next we want to drive them to the launch webinar registration page. And I'm actually breaking in terms of a journey. Um, 
Uh, Mike, sorry, Mike says um, he, my um, audio is cutting in and out, but nobody else is, nope, nobody else is um, got that problem. Everyone else is saying, nope, nope, fine, fine, fine. Sorry. You might want to try um, just one thing that often works is to just go to the audio section and then just switch to phone call and then back to computer audio and that sometimes finds, yeah, he says, yep, it's just me, sorry. Okay, um, okay, no worries. Hang on, let me just, <laughs> thanks you guys. Let me, oh God, there's like ton, a million people saying fine, 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 fine. Okay, very good. Um, so, all right, now I'm gonna break this out into visits webinar registration page and registers for webinar is two different pieces of the journey. And when we start building this campaign, you're going to understand why that is. Um, the short version is some people may visit and not register and we want to be able to retarget that. Okay. So you're going to see that in a second, but registers for the webinar is next. Then once we've got them registered for the webinar, then we want them to attend the webinar. And then let's imagine that this webinar, this training was my launch webinar. I'm not pitching you today. I promised you I wouldn't. Um, but if I was, then what I would be doing is trying to get you to buy immediately following this particular webinar, right? So buy. So I told you this is really simple, simple, simple customer journey, simple, simple campaign. Now let's keep going. So once you've got that down, you know, in your on in, in, on paper or in your head, however you're going to do it, then what we need to do is start figuring out our campaign for this launch. And the way you do that is you just start with the first milestone, if you will, uh, on that customer journey, which we said was to get someone to visit our free content. Now, um, in this case. There's actually an ad in order to get someone who we don't know to visit this content. There's actually an ad that comes before this that is not retargeting. Okay. And that is your ad to cold traffic, not the topic today. Um, you know, um, actually I did cover this in great detail in my last masterclass on ad on ad targeting. So if you want to understand how, you know, how you use their Facebook's ad targeting options to do that, go back and watch that replay. But, but you are in fact, in order to, you know, to put people in the top of this funnel, you're going to have to run ads to a big swath of people who, to whom this would be relevant to, um, using an ad to cold traffic. Okay. So assume that we run that ad, you know, to whatever, a million and a half people here in the States would be, uh, you know, divide by a factor of 10. If you're in a smaller country like Australia or the UK, you know, you're going to be running it to 150,000 people. And you're trying to get some percentage of those to click on that ad and go to your content and get them pixeled. Now, once you have done that, all right, they've achieved that piece of the customer journey, then the question is, how do we get them from having visited our content to visiting our webinar registration page? Well, there's going to be a couple of steps here. So the first one is we want to run an ad or ads to warm pixeled traffic. Now, when I say, well, let me, let me just show you the next step. Um, as well as we're going to run ads and send emails to all of our leads and customers. So, uh, so basically what I'm saying is we're going to send, we're going to show ads to every contact in our database. Um, and we're going to email, of course, not every contact, but only those who are on our email list and have given us permission to email them. And the distinction between them and the ads to warm pixel traffic is, so when I say warm, I'm saying the warm tra traffic is everybody who has, who has, and you could, and depending on what you're doing, you would do it one of two ways. You could either do it as anybody who's visited your website anywhere, right? In the last 20, 30 days, let's say, not just the people who went to this particular uh, topic that you were pushing your cold traffic ad to, 
Or you could just say only people who visited those specific podcasts or blogs. I don't know why you would do that. Um, you know, why not cast a little bit wider net? Um, so for me, when I'm doing this, yep, I am very definitely running ads in the beginning that are topic specific. But once I get ready to start retargeting, I'm basically retargeting everybody who has visited any of my uh, web properties and I don't have an email address for them yet. Okay. So they're not in my database. And which brings me to the to the the third piece of this statement, and this is really important. Who have not visited the webinar registration page and do not own X, and in this case, X is synced to CRM. So what we're saying here is, whenever you're doing ad targeting, and in particular, you're doing retargeting. You're always going to include groups and then you're going to exclude groups. And the exclude is people who do not want, who you do not want to either see that ad or you just don't want to spend money on them seeing the ad. Okay. So what you're typically doing when you're trying to figure out the exclude, the people who have not, right? So if I read this, it's, um, I'm going to send an ad to warm pixel traffic who've not visited the webinar registration page and don't own sync to CRM. And I'm also going to send uh, both email and ads to my, my people in my database who have not visited the webinar registration page and don't own X. So I'm, ex I'm including and excluding. Um, and um, there's always going to be that. And the way you figure it out is you just look further down your funnel, further down your customer journey and exclude people who have already done the action further down, right? So visited the webinar registration page is below that. So I want to exclude it. So is buying sync to CRM. So I want to exclude it. And by doing those two, I basically exclude everybody else. Now, the other thing that that's going to do is you're going to see when I actually get to building these ads is by excluding people who have visited the webinar registration page. Um, your, what will happen is when someone clicks on your ad and does go to the webinar registration page, it stops showing them that ad, which is what you want because you don't want to keep showing them an ad that they've already done whatever it was that you wanted them to do, right? So it serves both purposes. It says, you know, these people just, you know, they've already bought my product. So don't even, don't even sh include them in this campaign. But if someone does it as a result of the campaign, I also want to stop that piece and move them to the next. Okay. And so the exclude does both of those. Um, okay. Now, so let's keep going. So let's assume now we've got this ad running. It's gotten them to visit the webinar registration page. Now, how do we get them from visited to registered? Well, this is very similar. Okay. Now, now remember at this point, everybody at this point in the funnel is known to us now, basically. Right. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to run emails and ads to anyone who visited the registration page, but who have not registered for the webinar yet and do not own sync to CRM. So again, what we're trying to say here is don't keep showing them ads or sending them emails. If they've already registered, that's the next step. And don't show them ads or send them emails. If they already bought the thing it is that we're going to be selling in the webinar. Okay. Now it's okay if you sign up for it, I guess, you know, but you wouldn't want to be sending them necessarily, uh, you know, the ads. Okay. You wouldn't want to be spending money on it, etc. What if you're going to give a discount that they didn't get something like that? Right. Anyway, that's the idea. Okay. So that gets them. Is everyone following along on this? Um, um, Ron, I will catch that um, question at the end. Lisa says, perfectly. Carrie, thank you. Ron says, yep. Excellent. Thanks, you guys. Um, okay. So, um, hang on. I'm just deleting all the yups. All right. Very good. So, all right. So let's keep going. Now, this one's kind of interesting. Uh, no, actually, it's the next one. All right. So now we've got to get them from registered to attending. Okay. So... 
you know, usually people stop right there. If they even get this far, most people, just, so you know, they stop with getting a, someone pixeled onto their email list. So they show an ad, um, to get them to content. And then they show an ad to get them from pixel to opted in. And then the moment they're opted in, then they let email take over. And here's the thing that you're missing with that. It's the reason these say ads and emails. Uh, a study by Salesforce Research shows that someone who sees both an ad and an email with corresponding messaging is 77% more likely to convert than someone who only saw one or the other. Okay, so this idea of retargeting can be driven all the way down your funnel, just like I'm just like I'm showing you. Okay, so we're going to be sending ads um, and emails to anybody who is registered, but now the only exclusion is that they don't own X. Okay, trying to get them to the to the webinar, and maybe these are going to be indoctrination emails. Maybe you know, may, maybe they're just some of you who saw the ad that uh, um, a bunch of you probably saw an ad I ran that said "see you see you Thursday at noon." It was a picture of me and the dogs, um, right? So those sorts of things again, trying to just make sure everybody shows up at your webinar, and then okay, if we keep going, next step, okay then how do we get someone from attending the webinar to, to buys? Now, but here, there's something that we have called a leaky bucket. And here's an example of a leaky, one a simple example of a leaky bucket. What about the people who registered, we had the webinar, right? But they didn't attend. Um, I mean, I'm just looking at my attendee numbers. I had almost 200 people registered for this and I've got about 50 of you on, on the call, right? It all, I mean, it's, it's sad how that now works, but okay. So for me, there's almost 150 people right now on my webinar who registered, but didn't attend. Now, in this case, I'm not selling anything, so I'm not going to spend any money on ads or emails. Um, if they didn't show up, they didn't show up. But if I was, you can bet I would, okay? So what would I be doing here? I'd be sending ads and or emails to the people who did not attend but don't own Sync to CRM to try to drive them either. If this was a launch, I would probably have multiple webinar dates and times. I would, you know, I, I, you probably in a launch wouldn't send them to a replay, but, you know, that's an option as well. And, you know, and you, would, you would keep, actually, this is wrong. Um, you know what, this should, oops, sorry, this, let me go back, should actually say um, emails to people who did not attend and haven't attended and don't own X. Because, right, the moment, let's just say we were driving them to another uh, um, session, okay, well, as soon as they do attend that next session that we try to drive them to with this leaky bucket, then um, we want to stop showing this ad and start driving them to buy. So I missed an exclude right here. I'm, I'll go back and fix my slide. But it should you should be the email is going to anyone who did not attend, excluding anyone who attended and did not own uh, X. Okay. So um, now, but then so that's our leaky bucket, and I define the leaky bucket as just someone who I'll talk about it more later. Actually, um, at the very uh, in the section about the way five, uh, the five ways top marketers use retargeting, but it's just basically the idea that you use Facebook ads when people don't do whatever it is that you wanted them to do. Okay. Yep. Abandoned cart, Ron, exactly. Is a perfect example of a leaky bucket. Okay. Um, all right now. So, but that still leaves us with those people who did attend and how do we get them to buy? Okay, well, that's going to be ads or and or emails to the people who attended but don't own X. Okay, very simple, <laughs> right? Now, simple because I do this all the time. How about you guys? Are you following along with me? You good? Awesome. Yay. Okay, good. All right. Get rid of all the yups. Okay, very good. Um... Hang on. Um, Mark, um, Mark says, are you capturing an email before the registration page? In this particular case, well, let me go back. 
The answer is it depends because if you look at my customer journey, I'll just put them all together. No, here, I'll just do it right here. There we go. We're sending right here. We're trying to drive two different groups to that registration page. One is all the contacts in our Infusionsoft or Active Campaign or MailChimp or whatever it is who don't own X, right? Who don't own Sync to CRM. So we obviously already have their email address. And then um, also, People who have not opted in with us before, that's our warm pixel traffic. Now, I may know what, what question you are asking, uh, um, which is, would you put typically put a step in between here with a lead magnet? And the answer is, it, dep you know, it really depends. So, I, I mean, I literally just kind of copied this from Amy Porterfield's um, launch uh, sequence. And she doesn't do an in-between step. Now, one could argue that's because she's Amy Porterfield, <laughs> you know, and has such a huge name that she can drive cold traffic, um, sorry, warm traffic straight to her webinar registration and do a $2 million launch off of it, which was her last launch. Um, you know, I can't. And so... There would be, you know, now, would it hurt to try? Because at some point, am I going to, you know, so let me, let me finish this up by saying, am I going to artificially increase the um, funnel by putting a lead magnet? Because this is my launch campaign. So am I going to put a, a, a lead magnet in here? Actually, I just figured out the answer. I am not. And the, and the thing is, I know that the people who are already in my database are probably going to convert at a much higher rate than the people who are just warm and pixeled. But this funnel is specifically to get, you know, folks to buy as soon as possible. This isn't like a long time nurture thing where I can take two weeks, three weeks, uh, a month, three months to get people to buy. I need them to buy when the cart opens. And in which case I can't afford to put a lead magnet in the middle, right? Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I would not put, I, now in my regular funnel, I do. But yeah, but not, yeah, not in that one. Okay, good. Um, yeah, if you just look at my the the funnel you guys would be in, that is what well, that's what it would look like. It would have it would definitely have a lead magnet in there. Um, in fact, my nine step process that I work with my coaching clients on has a lead magnet in it. Okay, so so the question is, what do we need to what do we need in order? Slow down, Kim. Whew, what do we need to build this campaign? Well. Well, the main thing we need is we need a whole slew of custom audiences. So back to custom audiences, I said I would come back to them. Remember, this is just Facebook's word for a list or a group of its um, users. So in order to tell Facebook to show an ad to this person but not this one, we're going to use Facebook custom audiences to do that. So what we're going to do now is... I am going to flip over to Facebook. I'm going to do um, part of the, I'm going to do the demo part over there, and then we'll come back to the slide deck for the five ways top marketers are using Facebook and anything else we got going on. So give me a second here. Let's see if I can get out of this. And oh, by the way, that is, here's my nine step process right here. And you can see there's, um, there are very definitely landing pages, uh, sorry, lead magnets right in, in the middle of it. So, um, okay, let me find my browser. Okay, which is here. Okay, and make this bigger. And give you guys a way to see my cursor. Okay, all set. So this is business manager. Um, and this is where you are going to create the custom audiences that we're going to, that we're going to need. Now, the, you know, the beauty of sitting down and writing it out the way that I did is you should be able to then sit down and make all the custom audiences all at one go, because they should be obvious to you at that, at that point. 
Okay. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of them for you just so that you can see and to illustrate the different types of custom audiences that can be done. So um, in if I click on the, the little hamburger menu here in Business Manager, they have this frequently used uh, um, section over here, which happens to have audiences in it for me, but it might not for you. So if you go to all tools over here, you'll find audiences way over here by assets. And um, well, yeah, mine just keep going. All right, so they'll be over there, audiences. And this is just a list of all of your custom audiences. Now, notice up here that it says account and there's a drop down. Um, many of you will only have a single ad account, um, but if you have multiple, you've got to be sure and pick the right ad account. And to answer your question, Ron, because it fits right there. Ron asked, does it matter which Facebook account you use for the pixel? E well, yes, um, because so there's one pixel per ad account and you got to make sure that the you're just using the one that you're the pixel for the one where you're creating your audiences and your ads. Um, so um, so that's the that's the extent to which it matters. OK, now, so these are these are custom. Yeah, ah, spit it out, Kim. Custom audiences that I've already got made. But what we're going to do is we're going to create three different custom audiences um, that we're going to use in our campaign. So the first one we're going to do, the way that you create a custom audience is you come over here to this blue button and you say create audience. And when you do, come on, create audience. Okay, you get this custom audience, little drop down, and then it says, okay, what type of custom audience do you want to create? Now, we're going to do three of the four here. Um, we need three of the four, actually. So um, this app activity, unless you have a Facebook app, which I, I do, but 99% um, of you are not going to use this one, okay? Um, but you will use the rest of them. So the first one I'm going to do is a website custom audience, which is a list of people who visit your website or view specific web pages. And the the so I click that, and it pops up, and then it this drop down you can see the different choices that you've got for how to create this list. Remember, you're just creating a list of users. Facebook knows who they are, you don't, but you know what they've done and how you want to classify them. So here you've got um, anyone who visits your website. So if I if I click that one, I'm just going to give it a domain and basically an amount of time and basically anyone who, who hits any of those domains will get included. I can do people who visit specific pages. And so one thing you could do here, for example, I'm not going to, but um, like to that content idea about if you were sending people to specific content, all of my blog posts, which are about Infusionsoft in the beginning of the, the URL slug, it starts with ISB. Um, and so if I just said, show people who visit pages that contains ISB, I would know that that is specifically a group of people who are interested in Infusionsoft help, right? Tips, tricks, how to's, etc. Right. So that's an option. I can do people visiting specific web pages, but not others, which is what we're about to do. So I'll skip that for a second. You can do people who haven't visited in a certain amount of time. So they visited in the last 180 days, but haven't been back in the last whatever. So they've kind of fallen off if you wanted to try to reactivate people. Um, th um, this is uh, very new. Okay, so now you can do time spent on your website. Very new. They've been rolling this out for a while. Um, I just got it. Um, so you can do like your top 5% most active users, 10%, 25% most active users, okay, based on the time spent on your site. And of course, they know that because the pic they're pixels on your site, okay? So that could be a custom audience. Um, and then also they allow you to do these combinations as well. So you can do ands and ors. The problem with these combinations is you can only exclude, sorry, include them. You can't exclude them when you go to make your ad. So you would only use these if you really needed to. Um, so these are kind of like if you're an Infusionsoft user and you do save searches, this custom combination is sort of like instead of just using a simple tag, you use a save search. That's kind of what it's like. 
All right, but what we're gonna do is this one. Because what we need, one of the custom audiences we need is, remember, we're going to send, a, we're gonna put an ad to people who visited the webinar registration page but didn't register, okay? So the way that we would do that is, um, I've got my, hang on one second, I've got my URL slugs here that I, in my notes. So I can say people who visited a web page that says Facebook retargeting, that's my registration page. That's my landing page. Um, but, and I can do multiples, by the way, I'm not, um, but did not visit, one second, but did not visit the page that says, thank you, 2016-08-11. That's this webinar, okay? So if you visited, but you didn't hit my thank you page, I know, right, you're in that, that is one of my, um, my kind of leaky bucket things, right? In the last, whatever, 30 days, I've only been running this for 10, but that's fine. And then we would give it a name. So I'm going to call it demo, um, uh, visited, but did not register. And I, and if I was keeping this for real, I'd probably be a little bit more descriptive about what they visited and didn't register for, but you get the idea, right? And I say, create, create audience. Um, and what, what then happens is it takes it a minute to go, you know, find all these people and populate this. It'll always be red right up front. But, um, when we come back to it, you'll notice that it'll pop up green. It's gone out and, and found those people. Okay, and created a list that we can now use in our ad targeting. So that's one. Okay, I'm going to do another a couple another couple a little more quickly. So um, in terms of at the top of my funnel running to to sorry at the top of the campaign, I want to run to warm audiences, and one of my warm audiences are people who have watched my videos. Uh, because I run a lot of video content. Okay. So, oops, back up, Kim. So there is, back up again, explain as you go. So there is a, uh, this engagement on Facebook, which allows you to create custom audiences based on people who took action on either your lead ad or your video. And in this case, what we do is I want to do people who've seen at least 10 seconds of my video. I can choose which videos I want any moment now. Mm -hmm. You know what? This happened to me before. I'd forgotten about that. For some reason, this thing is kind of goofy. Oh, goofy thing. Okay, I had forgotten about that. This is a little buggy. It's new and it's a little buggy. This has happened to me mul multiple times. Sometimes I come back to it and it works. Let me just try it one more time. If it doesn't, I'll show you. I'll show you that one already made. Uh, 10 seconds. Nope, it's not gonna go. All right. All right, let me just, sorry about that guys. But let me, I actually have that um, custom, that audience already made. It's this one right here. So if I click on this and just say edit, I can, I think I can show it to you. Um, okay. Yes. So what you do is, let's see if it'll let me even hit edit. What you do is um, when you said, I want people who viewed 10 seconds of your video and then it's not bad gum it. Anyway, it, <laughs> it pops up a little box or it's supposed to pop up a little box. I should, try this on Firefox, but it, um, it pops up a little box that lets you choose from all of your videos. And uh, so you can see I've got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different videos that I'm including in this, in this audience. And what we're saying now is if someone has viewed at least 10 seconds of any of these 12 videos within the last 30 days, put them in this custom audience so that I can, um, target them. And yes, they are, they are hosted by Facebook. They have to be native, native Facebook, not YouTube, Facebook and YouTube don't play, not friends. Um, okay. They got to be native Facebook videos. And by the way, you never want to put YouTube videos on Facebook because you lose all the benefits 
um, Facebook gives huge preferential treatment to its own videos. Um, so anyway, that's, that is an example of a warm audience. Okay. These are people. Now I would have to exclude people who are, who are on my email list because some of these people may be, in fact, you all may have watched some of these videos, right? But that at least gives me the, um, yeah, you're all goobered up. It at least gives me the, um, custom audience. Okay. Um, so that I can include and exclude it. So that would be an example of an engagement office, uh, 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 an engagement audience. And then I'm going to try one more. I wonder too, if, if it might have to do with the fact that I'm on slow internet and, um, have, uh, you guys going, but anyway, let's just try another one. Fingers crossed. So the third one, the type, if I say custom audience, oh wait, yeah. Um, there's a, there's a type called customer list or customer file. And one way to do this is to upload a CSV file to Facebook. Okay. So for example, I could go take my customer, my entire list of contacts in Infusionsoft, export them and upload them as a, as a CSV file. The, the problem with that for our purposes is we are trying to run funnels which are dynamic, meaning ads start and stop based on where they are in our funnel and a static list that, you know, hasn't been updated with whoever is attended or not attended or what have you, right, won't work for us. So that's actually where my software comes in. I'm going to use Sync to CRM to actually create a version um, from that just stays synced all the time. And the way that I would do that is, um, hang on, the one I'm going to do, I'm going to do two actually, because we need both. So I'm going to do all contacts and then I'm going to do webinar attendees. Okay. From Infu both from Infusionsoft. So I'm going to say, create a Facebook custom audience um, from my Infusionsoft account, going to my Facebook account. The name of that is going to be demo. This one is all contacts because remember we were going to include all contacts in, um, in, um, our warm audiences, our first, our first one. And then we say what list, um, I've got all these tags available to me, but I actually want this all contacts at the very bottom. I say continue and I want it synced every hour and I say create. And so that's going to create that custom audience and keep it synced up every hour with Facebook. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do one more because we need that one too. I'm going to do a custom audience for um, people who attended the webinar. So demo. Uh, webinar attended. So we call it something else. Okay, what list? And you'll notice here in my, this is all dummy data here in this Infusionsoft sandbox, but still you can see I've got in here a tag called attended webinar. So I'm going to use that tag. And I'm going to also sync that every hour and I'm going to say create. Okay, so come on, dude. There we go. Uh, so, okay. So now what we're going to do, and by the way, they're down here. This one is, there's 1560 in that sandbox that are being, that have been synced over to Facebook and it's working on this webinar attended one right now. Okay. So when we go over there to Facebook audiences, you will see, um, you will see a custom audience there. You'll see the first one, probably the second one hasn't populated yet. There's the, oh yeah, it has. Okay, so there's demo all contacts and demo demo webinar attended, okay? Um, okay, so we have our three custom audiences, right? And in that one I screwed up. I forgot to say previous visitors. Let me see, Bill, just let me edit it. It won't let me edit that. Nope. Oh heck. All right. Well, what I should have said was because that's old, that's not, that's, um, you guys have already all registered, but anyway, so it's looking for future people because I forgot to put the check mark box that said 
um, include old people. So my mistake on that one. But anyway, it won't stop us from 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 using it. That was just silly on my part. I was in a hurry. Okay, you guys understand that? I haven't lost you on that, have I? You guys understand why that's not populating? Because I can go back to it and show it to you. Okay, if if anyone needs me to, everyone says they're okay. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Um, if I need to clarify for anyone, just let me know. All right. So we have, so we don't have all of these built that we needed for, um, the campaign that we just, um, that we just, <laughs> I don't know you, Damari, but I love you now. He says you, he, she, I'm not sure you are piling on the way. Cool. Thank you so much for that. I like that. Um, okay, so let's um, now go see what this would look like in an ad, okay? And we'll just, um, we'll pick something that we have done. Um, so one of the things that we said, sorry, I'm looking at my notes. One of the things that we said was we would do an ad to, to well, we can't do that one because I messed that one up, right? Um, let's do... I know. Let's do an ad to um, warm traffic. We'll just start at the top. So what we do now is we come over here. We go to the ads manager. And now we're going to tell it that we want to, to create an ad. So I would say create an ad. Wow, they just changed this again. Every day you come in and it's something different. Um, wow. Okay. So we are going to create an ad that we want to, this is going to be the ad driving them to our blog post or content. So this is going to be a, um, where did you put it? Not lead, send people to your website. Okay. A website click, and we'll just call this demo two. demo send to content. Actually, let's make it, sorry. Let's make it send warm to content, whatever that would be. Okay. Now this is the part I wanted to show you. I'm not actually going to do the, the copy, the creative, because that's a different masterclass. Okay. And what I wanted you to see was this. So when we start retargeting, okay, we're going to do a couple of things here. So remember this ad was going to see if I can find it actually was going to here, right here, warm pixel traffic and our entire email, our entire database who haven't visited the webinar registration page and don't own X. Okay. Don't own sync to CRM. So the way I would do that is I would start with just what it says, warm pixel traffic. So for me, anyone who's viewed my videos in the last 30 days, they're warm and notice that I'm saying include here. Okay. Anyone who has um, not visited my site in the last 180 days, that's not warm enough. Um, so what I want actually is I want, um, I've got a site traffic 20 days. That's, that's warmer. I like that. Okay. So those are my two, those are people who have been to my site. Okay. Warm traffic. And then I also said I wanted, um, all contacts, right? Um, so demo all contacts in my database that came from sync to CRM keeps that synced up. Okay. So I've got people who viewed my video, people who cite traffic and everybody in my database. And now I need to exclude people. So who did we say we didn't want to show these ads to? Well, we know we didn't want to show them to sync to CRM customers. Okay, because that's what we're selling. And we also said that we weren't going to show them to people who had visited the registration page. And you know what? I did not make a custom audience for that. Um, I didn't make one. I made one for, for visited but didn't register. But that's okay. Actually, that would work. Because if they visited, no, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. Just pretend like that was visited. Okay. That I did that. And I didn't, we would, uh, we would use that. We need to exclude that one. Okay. So, all right. So now we have all these guys, right. Excluding anyone who visited the page that shouldn't be excluded. Got them goobered up. There we go. 
It's going to people who viewed our video, people who've been to our site, and all contacts in our database, excluding anybody who visited the registration page, pretend, and are, have not bought Sync to CRM. All right, and then we could say here, we're going to say, we're going to take out this US because we want to show it to, in this case, anybody who falls in these lists, yes. Um, we also don't want to, we don't care about age or gender or any of that because it's it's a list. Um, we don't want to narrow that in any way, okay? Um, we want to, in this case, we would show it um, to our, let's just say, mobile and desktop and, you know, put a budget on it of $5 a day, whatever we want, and... And we're done and we're done. That's the that is the audience or the ad targeting piece of the of retargeting. So do you guys get that? The idea that basically, you know, we're we're building these ads and deciding kind of dynamically and, and in a way that um, we decide how to move people um, through based on what we already know about them and the and the actions that they take. Make sense? Okay, so cool. So let's go back. Awesome. All right. Um, let's go back. Mark, I see your questions. I'm going to um, save those for the Q&A. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the slide deck here and finish up and see if we can get to the Q&A. What time have we got? Okay, so there we go. All right, so these are the these are the way that top marketers are using retargeting, and these are kind of some broad categories. But I'll talk through them, and so that you can kind of understand, uh, you know, because there's a there's a million variations on each one of these themes. Okay. Um, so the first one is retargeting based on segmentation data. Your, you know, your database, whatever, your CRM should be a treasure trove of segmentation data. Um, and so what we do here is it's the idea that you're using the data in your CRM to show different ad creative to different contacts based on their responses to uh, interest questions on, say, like forms or surveys or buyer personas or customer statuses. In fact, well, a bunch of you filled out that um, ad assessment. There was a bunch of those for that very questions on there for that very purpose, right? So that I can segment. Um, so another example for Sync to CRM, the software, we have four buyer personas. Those are small business owners, uh, internet marketers, marketing professionals um, in small businesses and then small agency owners, okay? Um, so as people make our, their way through the funnel or they're in a, they call us or whatever, then hopefully they get asked which of those four personas they would fit into and then they get tagged in our system, right? And then from that point forward, we can create four different versions of each retargeting ad that speaks directly to that um, persona, what their issues are, you know, what specifically they are, where they are in our funnel, um, et cetera. And, you know, the obvious question here is, which do you think is going to convert better? The ad that seems as if I am talking specifically to you, like, uh, like I'm jumping out of your, your ad and, and saying, Hey, Carrie, you know, or just this generic ad that doesn't say anything to anybody. Okay, so that's the idea of retargeting based on on funnel segmentation data. Now, kind of similarly, is this idea of retargeting based on funnel stage? Um, and and as I said, you know, most people just stop at using ads at lead generation, which is not retargeting. Um, or they go so far as to retarget the, sorry, I should rephrase that. They they retarget the people that they pixel, but then they let their email address, uh, sorry, the email opt-in and the email uh, pick up from there. And if that's what you're doing, then you're, you, you know, you're playing small ball. Um, so hopefully what you're going to do now is map out your customer journey, like I showed you, and then create a corresponding um, marketing funnel. And then if you use marketing automation software like Infusionsoft or, or Active Campaign or any of those, right, that to drive your funnel, then you almost certainly have tags and lists in there already that mark the current location. Um, 
you know, of in your funnel where somebody is and then, you know, and, and trigger that movement in your campaigns. So, which, you know, again, I'm, if you're not doing that, we, we probably need to have a little talk, but because that's what they're for. But anyway, assuming that you do have that data to differentiate who's who, right, then you can use that data to show the different ads to only the people in that stage, just like I just showed you, okay, with the goal, of course, to be to move them to the next one. So that's funnel stages. The third is retargeting leaky buckets. And every sales and marketing funnel has leaky buckets. Um, so if you imagine a campaign where a cold prospect entering the top of your funnel um, at each step does exactly what you want them to do without delay, that is a perfect closed funnel, which none of us have, never happens, right? So what happened, what does happen is that at each step along the way, you lose people, contacts, which are very valuable. You've paid with time and money to, to get them. They get left behind in your funnels. And what we can do, as I, as I showed you, is that you can use the data from both your um, website custom audiences and your CRM um, to figure out where each prospect has gotten, you know, where they are in the funnel, and then use retargeting to plug all those leaky buckets. And and trust me, once you start to, I just gave you one example, right? But they're, they are everywhere. So, you know, the one example I gave you was someone who um, made it to the registration page, but didn't make it, didn't actually register. Well, so some other examples would be um, targeting contacts who have stopped opening your emails to try to reactivate them or, um, or um, you know, and maybe for them, you encourage them to follow you on social media instead, you know, join your Facebook group, whatever. Uh, another example would be people who filled out a lead form, but then didn't return your phone calls. Um, I mean, you get the idea. All of those where people don't do what you want them to do, those are all leaky buckets. You find them, use Facebook ads to reclaim some of that lost profit. And in my experience, my direct experience, I have been able to two or three X the profit on every campaign just by plugging all the leaky buckets in this way, which is a pretty staggering number. So leaky buckets are really big. Um, the fourth way is to create awareness and positive impressions. So the simplest version of this is just using like, for example, testimonial ads to create either, you know, a good um, impression or encourage conversion or reduce buyer's remorse, right? Um, but we can do something similar uh, to warm someone up before we reach out. Um, so let's say, for example, that you are buying lists and you're going to follow up with them either via email or an outbound sales team or something, right? Now, how much better might that conversation go if you targeted that list with a campaign, um, you know, showing them your valuable content, um, right? You just let each batch of new leads sit there and see those ads for a while, and then you start calling, right? And I mean, and that'd be good. That'd be okay. But, but, and here's an even better way. If you have a system that tracks visitors to your website, um, which, for example, Active Campaign does, which I, I use, well, how crazy effective do you think it would be to show them an ad linking to a blog post? And then the minute someone clicks on one of those ads, right, they're tagged and the salesperson is notified to give them a call. So, you know, if this was a cold list, you probably wouldn't call right away or it would be really cre creepy. But with warm lists, it could be just, you know, a coincidence. So thinking about your timing is kind of important. But imagine how that call might go. You know, you, like you, I get bing, you know, so-and-so just uh, uh, clicked on your ad and is on that blog post. And I call and I say, hey, my name's Kim Snyder. I'm the founder of Sync to CRM. And they say, oh, wow, that is so amazing. I was just reading one of your blog posts. Really? That is so amazing. What did you think of it? <laughs> you know, like right now, of course, there's lots of variations on that idea of using your content or your testimonials to warm, warm someone up. Um, you could maybe do influencer outreach campaigns, you know, so that you're retargeting influencers to increase awareness, um, et cetera, you know, or, or maybe you're up for an industry award. So you target the judges and maybe you think that's too underhanded, but anyway, you get the, you get the idea, right? Um, bunch of laughings and, um, okay. Um, all right. Let me, so that's number four. And then the fifth way uh, that we use them 
is to re-engage. This is a killer tactic. Um, and it's similar to the leaky bucket, except that these people were originally in your bucket and now they're just laying at the bottom of it dead. And so examples here would be things like, um, people who have canceled their subscription or their membership or, uh, stopped opening your emails or aren't using your app anymore. Right. I mean, so again, the fact that you need to re-engage them means that they probably aren't opening your emails in the first place. So it's a perfect job for Facebook ads. So let's take a campaign, um, to try to revive canceled subscriptions for sync to CRM. Okay. So of course I'm going to try to email them, you know, and we would use some subject line like, uh, you know, well, we want you back. Um, but th that's not probably not going to work. Right. So here's the, what the ad campaign might look like when someone cancels a subscription with sync to CRM, then we would put them. Um, and by the way, this is something I need to do and haven't gotten to yet. Um, so do as I say, not as I do, but we would put them in a new list or sequence called something like, you know, canceled awaiting resuscitation, something like that. And then we'd have a delay timer set on it for like, say 120 days. And then at the end of 120 days, they drop into a new list or a new sequence called subscriber reengage or something. And that tag or list is tied to, right? via sync to CRM tied to an evergreen ad campaign that starts showing them ads. You never had to touch it. Just as soon as they dropped in that with that tag or list, then the ads start showing and your ad creative might say something like, uh, you know, we miss you or a lot has changed at sync to CRM or still need help with automating your Facebook funnels. Right. Or, um, it could have a discount for resubscribing could have, you know, you could go in a million directions with the, um, creative, but the targeting, that you would use would just simply be a core, you know, the custom audience that corresponds to that list or that tag, excluding any custom user, any current users. So that if you're successful and they resubscribe that they don't keep seeing that, that ad, right? That's the idea. Whenever you include always exclude. And again, you know, the important point here is like in this case, many of these are not one-off campaigns. They're evergreen Facebook ad campaigns. Um, just like your email campaigns that show your ads automatically as people move into and, you know, and out of these, these lists, these custom audiences, these tags. And then once you build them, you just have to come back and, and refresh them periodically exactly the same way that you do your web copy and your landing pages and, and your emails is just, just another part of the funnel. Okay. So whew, that is the five ways that top marketers are using retargeting. And I hope those of you who are, you know, if you're like, if this is the first time you've heard of retargeting, maybe some of these are a little um, out there for you. You're going to just start working on the basics first. But for those of you who are more advanced and you can start thinking of variations of these to put to work. Um, and I, so I hope you'll swipe them and do that. So with that in mind, I am going to go to the Ask Me anything, um, section. We, I, it took a little, little bit longer than I thought it was going to. Um, but let me go see what you've got going in the questions here and I'll try to get them answered. So, um, hang on. I got a bunch of co just comments I got to get through. Um, okay. So Mark says to confirm the pages need to have I think it's a misspelling, but I think you're saying have pixels for this, these first audiences pages. So, um, it, the bigger point is Mark that you should have your Facebook pixel on every single web property that you have control over. And if you haven't done that, you need to go do it right now, even way before you think you're going to even use them. Don't wait. So when I say every web property, I mean all of your website pages, um, Infusionsoft order forms, Infusionsoft uh, landing pages, Infusionsoft web forms, click funnels, lead pages, Dialogger, any, most of those all have a place to put um, ex, uh, JavaScript snippets for Google analytics and these things. Um, there are a few places where you don't have that as an option, but most of them you do. And anything that is yours needs to be tracked. 
Um, so you would get on that first. So it's not just does that page need the pixel? Every page needs the pixel because you may need that data and you don't know you need it yet. Um, but but the answer to your specific question is yes, you can't you can't create a website custom audience if there is no pixel on that page. Um, would you put the same video on both YouTube and Facebook for YouTube's benefit? Yes, I do. I do that. Um, if you look at any of those videos of mine, they are also on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and basically we do this three times over for each step in the sales journey. I'm not sure I understand that question, what you're saying there three, three times over. If you, if you could clarify for me. <laughs> Carrie says, if I listen to you over and over, it's sinking in. Uh, you are definitely a, a diehard. I appreciate that. Um, Vich says, I came in late. Will you have a recording? I typically do not rec um, provide recordings. Um, but if you email me, my email address is up on the screen and just say it's me and I came in late. I would be happy to give you one. Um, okay. Are Facebook groups better than fan pages? Uh, not better, different. They both serve different purposes um, and you want to have both ideally, and you want to nurture both. The reason you want a fan page and uh, you can go back to my Facebook page, Sync to CRM Facebook page and look for, um, well, I won't go to it because it'll take too much time. There is an episode, it might be episode four, um, a Facebook Live where I talk about a ninja trick, which is targeting friends of fans. Um, so what happens now today is when you post something on your fan page, on your Facebook page, very, very, very few, 2% basically of your fans see that in their newsfeed. You've got to pay to play. But there is a, a, a reason to still accumulate fans who are true fans of your page, and that is this um, um, audience that I use all the time and which performs fabulously for me, which is friends of fans. And that's because birds of a feather flock together. And it's when you're just starting out and you don't have much of a list, uh, it is a great way to, um, cause you can use it even when you're small because the average Facebook user has 150 fans, sorry, friends. So if you've only got whatever, 300 fr fans and each has 150 friends, you can do the math. That's actually a, a pretty decent cold audience. And all of that is explained in that episode. So that's why you want pages. The reason you want groups are, I mean, obvious. That way you can be very high touch in those groups. They get to know you, you know, your highest conversions, your, you know, your 80, 20 people, the 20% who make up 80% of your business are probably in those groups. So two different things, two different reasons. Um, Jim says, should you new, use a new creative image? You, uh, I'm not sure what you're asking there, um, Jim. New creative image for what? I mean, I'm guessing the answer is yes, because, uh, you know, each, are you asking like each step in the, in the funnel? It would be definitely, I mean, the whole point of this is you want to speak to not only that person, but who they are and where they are and what they did last and what you want them to do next. And it should feel like you're talking to them. That is the whole point. That is what creates the big, um, conversion lifts. Right. And so absolutely every ad, every ad should have images and creative, which is specific to that ad and what they're doing and what, and what you know about them for sure. That's kind of the point is to make it more specific. If you don't, then you won't get any lift out of it at all. Um, yeah. Try, so a couple of people now are asking about the replay. Um, um, Nadine, Trevor, et cetera. Yeah. Just email me, Kim at sync to CRM.com. I'll get that for you. Um, and then, um, okay, Jennifer says, effectiveness of retargeting in B2B. What's your experience? Um, people look at Facebook to escape work, so I'm wary and wondering if it will work at all. Absolutely works, works brilliantly. There's absolutely no difference. Uh, this, um, and I've got, I've, I've done, uh, I can't think what episode it is, um, uh, 
Oh, I, actually, I know where it is. It was on the last masterclass on ad targeting, where I talked about some of the myths of Facebook. The idea that B2B doesn't work on Facebook is an absolute unadulterated myth. I don't know where it came from. It's bogus. It completely and totally works. Most of us are doing B2B. I'm B2B. Um, yeah. Even, I mean, um, there's a, I, I heard it on someone else's, it was a case study for Salesforce. Um, and they had, um, they had, holy cow, who was it? Not Bombardier, but like um, someone who makes jets, like not Boeing, but you know, someone like that. And, and he was talking about their Facebook ad campaigns. I mean, like you can't even talk about a bigger <laughs> B2B than that and the success that, and that they've success they've had using Facebook ads to drive, um, drive. So yeah, if it works for them, it can definitely work for you. Um, Jim says created a retargeting ad and it forced me to CPM. Yeah, um, it it may force you to CPM, um, it, depending on what you're doing. If it's a conversion ad, which it probably was, then it is going to be CPM. Um, you can do website uh, clicks to website as cost per click, but most of the rest of it is going to be cost. Uh, yeah, cost per per view. So not a, yeah, that's not a problem. Um, does YouTube allow for pixeling content? No. That's a totally different, completely different system that falls within Google Analytics and all of and AdWords and all of that. Um, Jim says Facebook allows you to take audience up to 180 days. How do you decide wh when to use long versus short? Well, um, you know, to me, it should just be short because the truth of the matter is, while it's tempting to say I want this number to be big, the fact of the matter is, if you haven't gotten back to them within ten or twenty days, they don't remember who you are. So um, just keep it short, even though you 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 know lose a bunch of the audience. Um, you want you want warm. Um, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> um, so Jim says you have a uh, is clarifying his form request. You have a great image on your original ad to cold traffic. When doing the retargeting ads, is it good to use the same creative? It depends. I mean, generally, I'm going to use something else if it fits. Great, use it. But the whole point of this is to be what made it great for for a cold audience isn't necessarily. Thank you, Carrie says different class. Yeah, I mean, like that is a whole class in and of itself. But you know, the the point of this is the fact that it worked great to a cold audience doesn't mean it's going to work great to a warm audience. So, because they're totally different things. Now they know who you are. Um, and you know, and you may be advertising something completely different. Like you wouldn't use the same ad, the same image to cold that you use for cold traffic as the one that you're trying to get someone to sign up for your, your webinar, which was this particular example, right? Um, so yeah, I'm going to say chances are that's going to be definitely a different image. Um, I don't understand that comment, Ron, B2B, B2B, um, carry the, okay, different class and why to buy your course <laughs> or at least, yeah, uh, Jim's already bought my course actually. Jim's already in our coaching program, so he can ask those questions. Uh, all right, Terry, you have to go. This is gradually sinking in. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Um, a few people saying they like the way that this was organized and put together. So that is, I got the end of questions. It is exactly 1.30. So here I will give you my summary in five seconds or less. The benefits of retargeting are more reach, higher conversions, lower ad cost. Who doesn't want that? I'm Kim Snyder, and hopefully we'll talk soon. Thanks, y'all, for being here.